ladies and gentlemen. We direct your attention to the commissioner's box adjacent to the Mets dugout. We are honored this evening to have with us baseball perennial good first ball, the old professor Casey Stengel. Casey Stengel, 83 years old, who tagged the nickname Amazing. Uh, the New York, when they respond to 1962, they're in the ballgame. And now here they are back yet. They'll be in the white home uniforms tonight. The Oakland A's in their traveling gold. Here are the umpire behind the plate. Ball fire. Uh, the American League's at first. Russ Gibbs. Uh, the National League's at second. We may have this mixed up here. The correct order. Yeah, they just have the league designations mixed up. New oh, yeah, New American, American League. goes back. Yes. Wendell Stett, uh, the National League, the third. Marty Springsteen, uh, the American League, down the left field line. And Augie Donatelli, uh, the National League, is in the right field line. Yogi Berra, Dick Williams, laughing it up tonight, despite all the controversy they've had. Dick Williams called a meeting of his players. He said, you wait. And said, listen, now let's go out. There was never any idea of the A's boy walk out of the World Series. We talked to their captain, so Bando to Reggie Jackson. Jackson had made the statement that many of the players were mad enough to walk out, but there was never any serious thought in their minds of boycotting the World Series. We're waiting for Tom Seaver to uh, make his way in. He had been warming up out in the Met bullpen in the right field area and cleared the air, explained the entire situation to his team, and then said, look, go out and play. You have a lot of money riding in the line and forget this. Sal Bando said, we're used to this kind of thing. In fact, it seems to relax us. The starting pitcher is coming in from the A's bullpen. That's Jim Hunt. Tom Seaver evidently is still in the Mets dugout, Lindsay. I think he's coming in the runway. There is a runway from the under the dugout, um, a covered passageway. I think that's what he's doing. That fish hunter has completed his warm up. Has Rusty stop number four. His shoulder getting better day by day. And he's in the starting lineup for sure now the rest of the way. And we're still waiting for Tom Seaver to make his appearance. He's just as the Lindsay on a cool afternoon weather. He likes it, and it doesn't take very long to tell whether or not he is super sharp or not. You find out right away with Seaver. We received a big roar as he was introduced to the crowd last July. They were trying to fire him here. In fact, they had a uh, public opinion poll in the papers to see who should go, Bear, the general manager, or the owner's representative. And now here they are, they're even up to game three. The Mr. Kuhn, Mrs. Kuhn, that's Chuck Feeney, the president of the National League. Commissioner is switching boxes here in the home city of the National League, sitting with the president of the National League in Oakland. He was with Joe Cronin, the president of the American League. Order that run, we might be blocked. <laughs> I'm wondering, this is the case of the missing story. <laughs> <might> forfeit. <laughs> when the Mets take the field, they'll have Cleon Jones in left field. Here they are, Don Hahn in center. Rusty Stahl in right field. There's Tom Seaver. Third. But Harrelson will be the shortstop. Felix Neon in second. And John Milner at first. Seaver right out there in front of the mound now, Kurt. Lindsay is checking the playing surface. There was a slight sprinkle just before. He's going to be going after slow hit ball or a bunt. He's a very thorough young man. He doesn't leave very much to chance. He wants to do anything good. Very well organized, isn't he? He knows what he wants to do before he goes out on the mound. He has a purpose for every pitch. Seaver, a 19-game winner. Good the year. Season before he won 20, and he won the clincher here in the fifth game to put the Mets in the World Series. Lost a heartbreaker in the opening game in the playoff at Cincinnati. Let's take a look at him in slow motion while his pitching coach, Rube Walker, gets you a capsule supper. Tom 
Jim Seaver is primarily a power pitcher. He has a real good fastball, curve, hitting, and a good command of all of them. I can't hear him. Pitching coach will drop the eighth. And left. We're camping there. Is leading off. Burke's got two hits, ten times up in the series. Excellent playoff. He had a hit in every game of the playoffs, the five games against the Orioles. And down to 250 at first and third in the event of a bunt. And Seaver's first pitch is just outside the ball. Seaver led the National League of strikeouts. He's led the National League of strikeouts. Three times in the last power pitcher with the power. Pop up the back of the plate. Jerry Brody, the catcher, flips his mask away and puts it away. Four down. Coming out to catcher Brody. Joe Rudy will be the batter. Steps in. This telecast presented by Authority of Major League Baseball. Intended solely for the private non-commercial publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of this. Nobody on. The A's batting in the first inning. Scored right. On deck. And Seaver cursing for a ball. There's a defensive setup. The Mets with these right-handed batters toward right more. So they will with the left-handed pitchers on the mound, figuring they won't be able to get around on Seaver as well. Rudy's had three hits and eight times in the series. And there's a long line. It's a fair ball in the corner. And Rudy's on his way and is in with a stand-up double. Joe Rudy gets his fourth hit. He and Reggie Jackson now are tied for most hits on the A's. <laughs> He must have had a hundred reporters around him alongside the batting cage tonight, Lindy, trying to get his reaction to the end of the age. Strike down to get the movie hit with you boys. I've never played in this ballpark. On deck is Reggie Jackson. With that uh, air resistant propeller to make the bat feel heavier. Pitches the ball. Rudy at second. One out. First inning. We're just underway. They're playing band with the same as they did Rudy. A couple of steps toward right field. Fouls it off in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. The breeze is the crosswind from third to first right now. Eight to ten miles an hour. Ball hit in the air to right field. Might be given a boost as it suddenly dies down. One ball, two strikes to count to Sal Bando. The 288 for the year, 98 RBIs, 29 homers. His best year. He hits a foul down the third base. That isn't the spot that Tom Seaver wants to get his curveball. That was a little inside, hanging curveball. Bando a little bit ahead of it. Seaver walked quite a bit, doesn't he? Yeah, he absolutely does. Two strikes. Fastball just missed and trying to do some umpiring. Two and two count. Terrific Tom is his label. The 2 2 pitch. Ball away. Many claim he's the best pitcher in baseball. You can always get into arguments. If he's not, Charlie, a member of the United States Walker Golf Cup team. He was a great athlete out on the West Coast. Two away. Reggie Jackson. Look at Seaver once again in slow motion. It was a hard slider. He got it inside, but he threw it with such velocity. The ball was by seven. Reggie Jackson finally got going. He had four hits in a row in game two out in Oakland after going hitless the first two times up in that game. He failed to hit in game one, and he had a miserable playoff against the Orioles, getting only two outs for the A's. Joe Rudy at second. No score, top of the first inning. Ball by Jackson. Strike one doing. Tennis on deck. That's the pitch upstairs that the A's better lay off with Tom Seaver. 
But that fastball starts at your chest. It's almost doing your eyes when it starts. It has a shot to tie or break a World Series record of six consecutive hits in a World Series. He has four in a row. You tell your speeder, we're just lightning with that one. No balls, two strikes. <laughs> this is the famous commercial artist who manufactures his own signs, and he seems to have one fit for every occasion. Jackson in the hole. Seaver's blowing two high fastballs by him. Now Jackson asks for time. Bring Jackson to pull the right field. Two strike pitch. No runs to hit. One man left at the end of the first out of the inning. Zero, zero. Great lunch, Barbara. Thank you. Come on, I'll show you. My Amana Radar Range Microwave Oven. It cooks most everything in about one-fourth the time, so you use less electricity. And with this, you can brown and grill right in your Radar Range Oven. The food guy is cool, so cleanup is easy. It's a lifesaver for busy people. But remember, if it doesn't say a mana, it's not a radar range. Your plane is leaving in 15 minutes. You're returning your rental car. You need a copy of the... You're tense. Now what? Relax. Once you use the Wizard of Avis, no one is equipped to have your rental agreement printed out and back to you faster. The Wizard of Avis. So you can be on your way faster. Get a wizard number. It's free. Hunter is a starting pitcher tonight for the Oakland Trees. He pitched a shutout last Thursday to nail down the American League Championship for Baltimore. Jim Hunter, a 21-game winner. And here's what his pitching coach, Wes Stock. This is a kind of pitcher who's a control pitcher. He relies on his slider and his fastball turbo once you are a straight changeup. He's a pitcher that really has a lot of determination and knows what he wants to do when he goes up there. West Stock commenting. Wayne gets to the first. He's had one hit at 11 times. That which is out for the ball. Jim Hunter has won 21 games in a row, three successive years. Born to live in Hertford, North Carolina. breaking trip. Here's that swing in slow motion, jumping on what looks like the cap to center fastball. The purity of our belly. Good swing. Look at that head down to the ball. That full extension of the arm to get all his power behind. Garrett is two hits in the series. They've both been homers. They didn't waste any time putting the Mets out in front one another. Felix Mion said what the Mets this year. Topsy plus the bunch. Well, Hunter's in time for ball two. Jim Hunter. The home runs allowed this year. He gave up 39. Ball three. A little bit low. Three to nothing. A strike. A strike. Felix Mion. Double one, nothing. Neon makes you turn. Joe Rudy pegs it in. And the first two Mets up are hit quickly. Dick Williams. Dick Green. Looked over out to Dick Green. Stop. Stop had one hit in five times. And that's for running at goal Mets. The pitch is foul backwards. And already John Odom is starting to work in the Oakland bullpen. John Blue Moon Odom, who pitched two innings of relief Sunday in Oakland. Rusty Stop. 
Still is not swinging normally, I would say, Lindsay, as I watched it in batting practice. Not swinging normally, but there was no way he was going to miss the World Series. Into the dirt. One ball, one strike. Hunter's a kind of a pitcher that can get off to a staggering start. To let him off the ropes, he can come back. He's a bulldog. That's one of his great assets, his competitive spirit. One ball, one strike. The rusty stop. Neon on first, nobody out. And the Mets are on top, one nothing on Wayne Garrett's leadoff homer. Here in the last of the first inning. Runner going. The player get left. And it's through the hole. Perfectly executed. Over to third comes Neon. There's a classic example of the hit and run, slapping the ball back to a vacated spot by an infielder who goes over to cover something base. And getting a good jump on the hit and run. Dick Green had given the signal that Campaneris was going to do the covering. Now the hit and run stop, getting a good pitch, off-speed pitch, one that he could wait on and handle. I would have thought that with Stop having and his hands all season long, they would have tried a little more hard stuff to him, especially inside where he seems to have trouble getting around. Watch Rusty again on this perfectly executed hit and run. The hands off and running. Look at him wait on the pitch. The breaking ball down, low and away. That's a beautiful play, Lindsay, when it's executed. Swap right back to the hole, and uh, John Odom throwing harder now in the open bowl. His teammate Jim Hunter in serious trouble here. Runners on first and third, nobody out. That first pitch is a strike to Cleon Jones. Jones. Leads the World Series and base hits with five. Five out of nine. There are the two runners. Meon at third. Stop at first. The Mets ahead. One nothing. They're home before their roaring fans. Into the dirt and back to the way. Into the dugout. And the score is Meon. And the Mets have a two nothing lead. That'll be a wild pitch charge against Jim Hunter. Oh, clear enough. A chest to pass into the dugout. It's a ground rule, one base, going into that dugout. Rusty stopped at second. Nobody out. Two runs already in for the Mets. One ball, one strike to Cleon Jones. This is not the Jim Hunter we saw last Thursday in Oakland against Baltimore. Now, Jones probably was trying to go to right and get this man over to third. Now he dumps it. Foul ball. He can hit the right field and hit the right field with power, right, Lindsay? He can hit with power all the way around, and I noticed we shaded him defensively playing him to go to the opposite field. He can go that way. He has good power all around. One ball for Cleon Jones. Nick with injuries. Disappointing first half this month of September. Good playoffs, and even better in the World Series. Two balls, two strikes to Cleon Jones. Jones is the best athlete on the Mets. Running, throwing, power, all around. Hunter's curve is high and inside to him. Ball three, three and two. Leon Jones graduated from training high. Mobile, Alabama. Hit many great players, including Henry Aaron, Willie McCovey, Billy Williams. The three-two pitch. Pops a foul back toward the seat. And Cleon was hit in the school's history. He and Tommy Agee were childhood and teammates for the Mets. In high school, they called him Beep, because when he carried a football, they said, that's all you heard, Beep, and he's gone. <laughs> Three to two. Cleon Jones, nobody out. Rusty stop at second, two runs in for the Mets. Struck him out on a sinking pitch. One down. John Milner up. Milner had four hits in 10 times. Three hits in the playoffs in 17 times. the Mets for 23 this season. Little topper to the box. Hunter bobbles the ball out of the park and it's normally an excellent fielding quickly. And right now everything's going wrong for Jim Hunter and the A's. Center field camera the second time it's happened in this series where a pitcher has gotten the ball stuck in his glove. It happened with fingers in the first game. 
Mallow through right foot over left. Has to come back on the ball now. And I think he may have made a cardinal mistake trying to look at that runner before he had possession of the ball, making sure that Staub was not going into third base. And with those big pitchers' gloves, the ball can get away easily that way. The A's are hurting themselves with bad fielding plays. They had five. And they're here today. It's their sixth error of the series. Runners on first and second for the Mets. One out, two runs in. And the pitch is outside to Jerry Grody, who's had two hits at ten times. The Mets are leading 2 nothing. If you just joined us, last of the first inning. He's proud and happy to send you another World Series. One old pitch. Curve for a strike, one and one. Jim Hunter injured himself in a hunting accident. He already signed a bonus contract. He's kept the bonus and had his foot repaired at the Mayo Clinic. And he's come on to become one of baseball's great pitchers. Two balls and a strike to Jerry Grody. Rusty stopped at second. John Miller at first, one up. Playing Grody to the opposite field. There's a curve at it the knee. A strike two, two and two. Jim Hunter never there, stop at second. Milner at first. Hunter never pitched in the minor leagues. They both had it young. They were ready. The real stars usually are when they're young. The 2-2 delivery -two that one by him. A high inside fastball strike out number two for Hunter. And Don Hahn is up now. Don Hahn has had one hit at nine times. His seasonal figures you're taking a look at. I feel shallow for him and to right. Two down. Hunter's on first and second. On hit to drive in the left center. Joe Rudy's positioned, but has it to retire the side. And Hunter bulldog his way out of that jam. Two runs, two left. There was one error. The end of the first inning, two nothing. There's a frontier like America was 200 years ago, the outback region of Australia. Few Americans ever get to see it, let alone explore it. But you only go wrong once in life. And this is the one chance to reach out as one, tell them get to do. And when there's someone to share a gust of world with, but no matter how short a time, you've struck it rich for life. Even sharing a touch of home brings you closer. Like your beer, Schlitz. Once around life. Around living, once around beer, you keep around Schlitz. Come around, take the best that life's given. Come around, taste the gusto of Schlitz. Gene Tennis leading right now, that he might be in for one of those overpowering games. With it. He struck out two in the first, he's very quick. Foul away at strike two. He pitched last Wednesday. He's had five days rest. Well, actually five and a half. And he has only one hit and six times up. Irving strikes him out. Three strikeouts in a row for Tom Seaver. Nick Davileo, the ace center fielder, will be the next batter. No hits in one time. <laughs> On April 22nd, a 19, 19 batters at San Diego. That's tied Steve Carlton's major league record for a night in a game. Then he set a new major league record in that game by striking out 10 in a row. The last 10 men he faced. That's what you call. One out, nobody on. Vic Davileo looks at a curve outside for a ball. On deck, see, the Mets are ahead 2 nothing. Flap 
pops the ball around now and then he'll catch a hold of one and drill it deep. High and away, ball two. We're going to pause briefly for station identification. Television Network. WNB. Kurt Gowdy, Lindsey Nelson, and Tony Kubek back with you in Shea Stadium. Receiver pours the fastball over. Two balls and a strike to Vic Davileo. In tight at third is Garrett. Just a bit high. Three and one to Davileo. Stavalio, an unusual batting stance. Watch that right leg. Earlier this season, he did that, and he fell backwards on his back. <laughs> Cut off balance. <laughs> A pitcher with control. He walked only two men every nine innings this year. Davileo slams a foul deep down the right field line. Our count, three and two to Vic Davileo. One out, nobody on. Well, Lindsay, you've seen Seaver year after year since they came in with the Mets. How fast is he tonight compared with some of the great game you see? This is one of his better nights, and many times he warms to the task as he goes along. Foul away by Davileo, and the count stays three and two. He's averaged six strikeouts a game in his career. The three-two delivery. Quick three in the outside corner. Four strikeouts in a row for Tom Seaver. In the World Series game six, set by Horace Eller of Steam 19, and Mo Drabowski coming out of the bullpen of Baltimore against the Dodgers. In 1966 at Los Angeles, six strikeouts in a row. Seaver now has struck out four in succession. Ray Fossey, curve over for a strike, having a one. And that's the pitch that makes that fastball so much greater. You can get those hitters looking for that breaking ball like Seaver just threw, and they're really in trouble. Tom Seaver, 28 years old. There's a foul ball, and he has Fossey in the hole now, two strikes. Seaver lives in Greenwich, Connecticut. He first came up, Kurt. He said he wasn't a strikeout pitcher, and he'd, he'd tell me every spring, I'm not a strikeout pitcher. Two years, and set a new rec record for strikeouts by a right-hand pitcher. I said to him, Oh, you're finally a strikeout pitcher. He's time a strikeout pitcher. Huh? Outside for a ball. One and two. Another duel. If both these men stay in, we'll be with the bats. Both Seaver and Hunt hitting pitchers in baseball. Breaking delivery way outside. Two and two to Ray Fossey. Two down. Nobody on. The A's batting in the second. The Mets have jumped. Two pitch. Out, out. They had a check for the first base umpire. Just to be sure that he committed himself. Seaver struck out three in a row, five in a row at the end of an inning and a half of the New York Mets. This is Monaco, where the night skies are filled with excitement and color, and the concert halls with elegance and music. Of course, we're very spoiled here with our music. We have wonderful orchestra and lovely concerts and opera. And this is Monaco. Monaco 1974 by Dodge. As obviously new as it is beautiful. Its elegance and sophistication, styled after the country whose name it carries. Engineered with all of the comfort and quiet, the solid dependent Dodge. 1974, a beautiful time for Monaco. Monaco! Time as our coverage on NBC will start the game for the World Series at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And the World Series game will be preceded by the baseball world of Joe Garagiola. Hope you're tuned again to NBC tomorrow night. There's Carmen Barra, Mrs. Yogi Barra, been in a lot of World Series games. Her husband played in 75 or competed in 75 with her, being in a World Series. The World Series affair to anyone who 
If any family is used to it, the Barra family. And there he is, the matinee idol of America, Yogi Barra. Ball one, strike one. Nellie's put that meat and potatoes on the table for him. One ball, one strike to Bud Harrelson. He hits a pop up out into shallow center coming on. Cavaleo makes the grab. One down. Jackson's over in right tonight. And Joe Rudy in left. Tom Seaver giving a hand. Remember now, when he comes out in the top of the third, he goes through his record. He'll be facing. It would be six strikeouts in succession for Seaver, which would tie the all-time record. You know, interestingly, Lindsay, on that pop-up by Hurlton, three hats flew off. On Oak, the second baseman, and the shortstop, <laughs> they all lost their caps. The Mets are ahead 2 nothing. Jim Hunter's over with a strike, one and one. Hurls through his record, too. Three caps on one play. Good. High on the inside, and Hunter loses his cap. <laughs> Seaver, the league average of 158. Remember game one of the National League playoffs, he came up with a double. He knocked it. Last ball is over. Two and two. And Hunter now seems to be getting his bearings after a rough start. He gave up a leadoff homer to Garrett. Two hits and two nothing. Foul ball back. Two and two. That first inning, Hunter was behind four of the seven hitters he faced. Garrett and me on, and he does not usually pitch that way. He usually wants that first pitch, make it his best pitch in the strike zone. One out, the base was empty for the Mets in the last of the second. Is over by the Mets dugout. And reaching in is Gene Tennis, and he has it. Gene Tennis into the box seat, gets a hand on a sparkling play on Sieber's foul ball. Cutters began a lot less room here in Shea Stadium between the foul line and the stands over in the cameraman's position. He makes a whale of a play on this one and takes the camera down with him. Here's another angle as Tennis goes into the cameraman's box. Fine play by Gene Tennis. He's a valuable man to those A's. You ever play first much? Catch your last. Lindsay tells me the main thing he had to learn was getting his feet untangled at first base. <laughs> I expect so. Wayne Garrett led off for the Mets in the first inning with a home run to right. There's a foul ball down the right field line. One ball, one strike. Tim Hunter now has retired four in a row, so he should have six men off and an easy bounding ball by John Miller back to the box in the first. Ball two, strike one to Wayne Garrett. Runs three hits. He's no runs, one hit. Last half the second. Three balls and a strike to Garrett. And they're playing Garrett as a dead pull hitter to right field. Jackson's in the right field corner, and Davalillo's well over in right center. Hunter's 3 1 pitch. He wanted it. 3 and 2 to Garrett. Danny Murtaugh, back as manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Won the world championship with the Pirates two years ago. The inspirational play of the man, Roberto Clement. The late Roberto Clement. Ball four. First walk given up by Hunter. Wayne Kerr at first. Two down. Phoenix me on up. He spanked a single to left his first time. You know, Jim Hunter won 121 games this year, despite being on the disabled list for about a month. He suffered a fractured thumb in the All-Star game at Kansas City. He was injured on July 24th, didn't pitch again until August 19th. He might have been a 25-26 game winner this season. Two outs. Garrett at first for the Mets. They're leading 2-0. Neon way up in that bad handle. Tries to go to right, fouls it back. Neon, very difficult man to strike out. Now 
again. Trying to slap it to the opposite field. Nothing and two to Felix Mion with Garrett at first, two away. Mion appeared to be a little bit farther away from the point than he was in the first two ball games. I don't know if he did it purposely this time to try and go to the opposite field. And his hands and elbows are right in the center of the strike zone. Foul ball. When Wayne Garrett hit that home run in the first inning, Jim Hunter was not going to repeat his performance of May 8, 1968 when he pitched a perfect game at Oakland against the Minnesota Twins. There have been no perfect games in the Major League since then. Not a base runner that night for Minnesota. Here we are with our handheld camera shot looking over the first base. There goes the runner and he fouls it back. We got a pretty good look on that shot at the move to home plate by Hunter. Garrett at first, Mets ahead 2 nothing. last of the second. Dean Tennis holding. The fastball makes the count one and two. I like that shot from behind that first base, but you don't see that too often. See exactly what the base runner sees. Read those moves, the heel movement, the knee kick, shoulder. There's a drive right to the shortstop. Campanaris to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left at the end of two. Two nothing Mets. He's going to. No, he won't green the third to throw over. And there's one down. Seaver has struck out five in a row. The it's Brookhart Green would have tied an all-time World Series record of six consecutive strikeouts. But against the first man out of the third inning, Green bouncing out. Dick Green previously had gone over four. And now Jim Hunter's up. And despite the fact he hasn't hit all year, well, he's hit once. He's a 1,000 hitter this year. He had one for one. Jim Hunter has a lifetime batting average of 227. Anytime a pitcher has a lifetime average better than 200, he's what one of the ball players called a good hitting pitcher. He's hit six homers in his career, too. Strike to him. $5,000 bonus because of his hitting. The rest of the money for his pitching. The one strike delivery. Strike two, nothing and two. Red Ruffing used to get a double payment with the New York Yankees. One check for pitching and one for pinch hitting. Two deliveries. Outside, ball one. One and two to Jim Hunter. Mets are leading two nothing. We're in the top of the third. Fly ball to center field. Don Hahn drifting in under. Two down. Now we go to the top of the order and Burt Campanaris who fouled out his first time. Campanaris has not walked so far in this World Series. He's been hit by a pitch ball. And they shorten up at first and third again. Excellent bunner. Outstanding speed. A curve is a strike. That's Seaver's best curveball. That was one of those roll-off-the-table jobs. Seaver put down seven in a row. One ball, one strike. He's very much in command right now. The man you see on deck that's swinging that bat was Joe Rudy. 1-1 one, one pitch to Campanera. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Joe Rudy. We have next if Campanaris gets aboard. One two pitch is laced in the right field by Bert Campanaris. Up with the ball is Rusty Style. That's the second hit for the A's. Campanaris has stolen two bases so far in the series. And Joe Rudy up. Rudy double into the left field corner in the first inning. The Mets have three hits. The A's have two hits. The Mets are ahead 2 nothing. Right away for Joe Rudy. Ball 
how about Seaver's move to first, Lindsay? Doesn't have an exceptional move, but he had a deal of time. Campanaris is starting the season. Rudy hits the bonding ball to Harrelson, makes the play to second to Neon for the fourth, and the A's are retired in the third. No runs, a hit, one man gone, it's 2 0 New York. Rusty Stout getting a hand. Three homers in the playoffs. The hero with a bat helped the Mets into the World Series and injured his shoulder. He's been struggling. A strike to him. Stop, single to left in the first inning. Started twice, relieved once in last year's World Series. There's a high fly. That's down the left field line. Rudy racing for it. Nearly stumbled as he went over, and he caught it. He nearly fell down. One away. Stop flying to left. And stop uh, with that lame shoulder. Look at it again. Rudy going after this one in the left field corner. The field was torn up after the championship series game, and the ground crew has done a great job getting it back in shape, but I'm sure it's pretty bumpy and soft. And they torn up an understatement. One out, nobody on. Cleon Jones struck out his first time. Last of the third inning. New York inning. Bounding ball to Bando at third. There, and they're two down. And if Hunter continues to go along, they may have let him off the ropes. John Miller reached on an error when Hunter bobbled a one hopper back to the box in the first inning. for 11 that uh, you see that those are the World Series batting figures ball one we've given you seasonal statistics on these players as hitters and also World Series figures their second time up A spike one and one on there two down nobody on the on deck batter is Jerry Grody the net catcher they play Miller to pull the right ball two strike one Mets, two runs, three hits. A's, no runs, two hits. 2-1 two pitch. Out so far, has struck out two, walked one. Given up three hits to the first three batters he faced. Second walk. Issued first, two down. And Jerry Grody, the Met catcher coming up. Grody struck out. Catcher Jerry time. Grody, number 15. He's a player, a warm-up, or a pitcher, and say, boy, I've got it tonight. You go out to the mound, he won't have a thing. That was Dick Williams. Trying to give his pitcher Hunter a little moral support. Hunter may not quite have been loosened up to Lindsay when he came uh, out for the first inning. Entirely possible, because he's certainly settled down since. <laughs> Jerry Grody. It's a foul just outside third. Nothing and one to Grody. John Miller returning to first. Here's Tony's favorite shot now. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know, you mentioned Hunter being a 20-game winner again. Even though he was a 20-game winner, many of his other statistics were not as impressive as last year. He walked me. His earned run average was more than a run greater than last year. The Mets don't run much. Next to last of the National League and stealing. They'll put the hit and run on it. We've already seen tonight. Tony, if you were a base runner at first now, if you were John Miller, as we, uh, if that shot comes up again, first baseman toward the pitcher, what are you looking for there from that pitcher? I might look at that left heel to see if it moves upwards first. It means he's going home. You have to move that left heel first. They also can look at the left shoulder. If he opens up to home plate, that left shoulder moving toward home plate, you want to take off. Miller at first, two down, the 1-1 pitch. Inside for a ball. Oakland this year stole 127 bases of the team. The Mets 27. Oakland stole 100 more bases, but 53 of those stolen bases are missing from the World Series in the person of Bill North, the A center fielder who is severely sprained ankle and couldn't play in the playoffs or World Series. Undoubtedly, the A's miss him in here. He and uh, Campanaris were a potent one and two. Set up in that batting order. 
getting on base and is stealing or going to third on base hits. One ball, two strikes to Jerry Brody. John Miller jocks. Brody fouls it up third. One and two. Another thing you might look for off Hunter when he's pitching from his stretch position from that camera angle we have behind first base is his left knee. And that left knee bends. He's going home. When it is sh moving straight, he doesn't bend it. He's coming to... F One ball, two strikes. He's outside, ball two. Jim Hunter led the American League in one and lost percent for the second year in a row. Last year he won 21, lost seven. This year he won 21 and lost five. He became the first American League pitcher to lead the league two years in a row in the best percent since left the Grove did it back in 29, 30, and 31. Slow hopper to shortstop, Gavin Erz. Flips over to the second baseman, Dick Green, for the force on milk. One left at the end of three, two nothing New York. Very enthusiastic about the XL100. It tracks extremely well from high to low brightness levels in all types of scenes. These TV service technicians rate new RCA XL100 color TVs. I'm noticing watching the XL100 that the definition was real sharp. The 100 chassis has one of the sharpest and clearest pictures I've ever seen. More independent TV service technicians own RCA than any other color TV. The XL100 is the service man's dream. We like to buy some. Radio Lifesaver, steel Goodyear tires. Good, Rich Pop. That's what I mean. My son is a college graduate. It tells me good, Rich. Been making the radial tires eight years. Bravo. Tires you make good. But whoever makes your name an, an, an elephant? Elephant. An elephant would forget it. So I got some ideas for you. Uh, is Mr. Goodyear around today? Good, Rich Pop. <laughs> good, Rich. If you want good, Rich, you'll just have to remember good, Rich. Today, your car engine's greatest enemy is more equipment, emission controls, power steering, air conditioners, automatic transmissions, all cause heat that may rob your motor oil of its full power to protect your engine. For your peace of mind, your oil, as soon as your owner's manual says to, and use only a premium oil made for today's heat. For your peace of mind, specify Quaker State. to the fourth inning at Shea Stadium in New York. The A's behind 2-0. We'll have their number three, four, five hitters of the lineup. Bando, Jackson, and Tennis against Tom Seaver. No walks, giving up two hips and no runs. And his first delivery to Bando is a ball. Bando struck out his first time. Pretty Met fan. Two, one of the few times Seaver's been behind on a batter. You get a pitcher like Seaver with his stuff, and he's ahead of the hitters. Look out. Two balls, no strikes. There's a blast deep in the left field. Jones racing, and is there for it. Leon Jones racing. Kirk, this Mets team is a very well-coached team, I think, and they've got good scouting reports. As soon as the count got 2-0, both Buddy Harrelson from the shortstop Cleon Jones, the left fielder, moved toward the foul line. They knew that bad was going to try and get on front because he was ahead of that pitcher. Reggie Jackson took a call third strike his first time. Two runs, three hits for the runs, two hits for the A's. Jackson fouls it back, strike one. This wind coming in against the hitters. Spurts. Every time I say win, the flag dies. <laughs> Honestly, there is a freeze here tonight. <laughs> one out to Buddy on. The 0 and 1 pitch. A ball, 1 and 1 to Reggie Jackson. The home run leader of the American League and also the RBI leader this year. One strike. Serving. One ball, two strikes. One out for the A's. Base is empty. And a curveball. That's strikeout number six for Steven. 
got this breaking ball again, and I've got to ask Lindsay this question. Lindsay, does Tom Seaver have this kind of breaking ball consistently? No, he, not, not consistently, because it's really sure he has high regard for it. He has a fighter. Uh-huh. <laughs> Two down, nobody else. One ball, well, it's easier than curveball. Two down, nobody on for the A's in the fourth. Two nothing Mets. A ball. Seaver will have to go along at a rapid pace to challenge Bob Gibson's all-time World Series strikeout record for a single game. 1968, Gibson struck out 17. Two and one. Sandy Cole back struck it. Gibson struck out 17 Detroit Tigers in 68. Two balls, one strike. Here's our handheld camera moving around. A ball, three and one. Gene Tennis. Starting with two outs, the base is empty. And the Mets ahead, two nothing. He's on. There's the first walk given up by Tom Seaver. 101 walks for tennis. You don't usually consider tennis when you think of him as a man that gets on base a lot with walks, but that shows you how he knows the strike zone and how selected he is. Davileo took a call third strike his first time up. Days have had only three base runners thus far, two hits and a walk. A strike, they're playing off the bag down at first against tennis. They don't figure him to be going anywhere. Now what? Tennis Seaver struck into his motion. The one strike delivery is a little dribbler. This is going to be a tough play for Grody. And he makes the wide throw that pulls Miller off the bag. Safe at second is tennis. Safe at first is Davalillo. Getting out very quickly on this play in front of the plate, something that Johnny Bench did so well. Yogi Berra did it well. He tried to sink the ball and watched Grody get out, throwing the mask on the side. Vision is not impaired. Seaver giving ground, bare hands, and now Miller making a fine play, saving an error. The ball going all the way to that. Let's look at it again. Watch the play by Miller. Good stop. They have given Davileo an infield hit. Each team has three hits tonight. The Mets are leading 2 0. Here's on first and second, two down. Ray Fossey up. Took a call, third strike. He's failed to hit so far in the series. He's 0 for 9. And he tapped it over there. The pitcher is charged by Haroldson. His throw to first is just in time. Fossey out of the first. Fine charge by Buddy Harrelson. Seaver really jammed up with that fastball, got it open in. Well, Pryor down at first base. The close call, Rudy and his stride, and I think it's a tie. No, I don't know. Paul Pryor with a close call. At the end of three and a half innings, that's two to nothing, New York. You know, the back of a pickup just isn't a place for a lot of expensive gear. That's why I got a kick out of it when Dodge introduced the club cap. It's got 34 extra cubic feet of storage space behind that room. The club can The only place you can get one is a Dodge. Extra care in engineering makes a difference in Dodge trucks. Depend on them. The bull and confidence. Today, signature of a company, Merrill Lynch. Total assets, $3.6 billion. Net worth, $449 million. Securities held for customers, over $20 billion worth. Merrill Lynch, strong, solid, substantial, developing new investment ideas. Merrill Lynch, 29 ways to help you share in America's. Just, uh, well, you, she's blocked out right now. Now the policeman's sitting down. Joan Hodges, the widow of the late Brooklyn girl, all the way. Bill managed the mess to the world title in 69. the bases and he has a double a fan reached out and touched it down to the side. and 
Orlando playing off the back, as you can see, for Don Hahn. Hahn with that close bend, expected apparently him to hit late to the opposite field. Playing even with the bag, in case Hahn might bunt, up to a lot of the territory he could cover. Well, Hahn had the first hit for the Mets since the first inning. The Mets had a home run, they had two singles. Pitch scored the Mets second run to make it two nothing. Second nobody out in the last of the fourth. But Harrelson, the batter, they're looking for the bunt. He dumps it and foul down the third baseline. Tom Stever, the Mets pitcher, is due up next. In fact, he's down there in the on deck circle with a warm up jacket on. Look at that Han double once again as it ends up going with the left field foul line up bar. <laughs> underneath the underneath the decorations. <laughs> I see you, Rasta. Mando shortened up at third once more. Tennis at first. Lynn Blatt, a left-hander, Odom a right in the A's bullpen. But there's a difficult pitch to bunt that one. Almost throwing right at him. Odom's a right-hander, Lynn Blatt's a left-hander. Odom was warming up in the first inning when Hunter was in trouble. It's one for some trick plays by these Oakland A's. Sal Bando, the man that teased them with various signals. Harold can fly it out his first time. Again, two balls and a strike. First, these A's in that second ball game had a trick play go awry when. Tug McGraw made a perfect bunt as Bando charged. He slapped it over his head. This will be our handheld creepy camera taking the focus on Sal Bando, the third baseman. That's a foul ball, and the count is two and two to Bud Harrelson. Now Bando backs up just a bit. at second. Nobody out. The Mets batting in the last of the fourth. Jim Hunter delivery to Bud Harrelson. Fouls it upstairs. Fielded brilliantly in this series. Not only made good players, but he's just been steady. And he's had three hits. He's still trying to get out and front pull the ball, get that runner into third base with less than two outs. He did pull it. He hits it out to taking a second is Han. Han's not coming though. Jackson with a good arm. The line to the third base from Bando. What a throw that was by Reggie Jackson. A frozen rope from right field. You see Bando hold it over the back is like a, a catcher trying to get a strike from the umpire. the strong throwing arm again of Reggie Jackson. Boy, does he love to show it off. He does right here. Look at that. Oh, who's at odds from the hometown crowd? Here. Out on a second. Tom Seaver up. The Mets pitcher fouled out his first time. Out of the... The Mets leading 2-0. They've had four hits. The A's three hits. The A's have committed an error. <laughs> Two of the best right-handers in baseball. Matt up tonight. Oddly enough, pitching in game three of the series instead of starting at the ace of each staff. The strike to playoffs change now. The old complexion of leading with your aces. Game playoffs in each week. Most of the times, the aces of each staff are back pitching in game four, game five. Trying to get into the World Series. Strike delivery. Low inside a ball. One and two to Tom Seaver. That man number 25 with his back to you was Don Hahn. This is Wayne Garrett on deck. Yeah, yeah. One-two pitch. Foul ball. Don Hahn on the second. Strike three and a curve. Third strikeout for Jim Hunter. Ballard. 
He led it off for the net to the first inning with a home run, and he won. Here we've got West Sox coming out now. Bando went to the mound also with two down. First base open. The left-handed hitter Garrett up. A right-hander fouled. The following me down. Put him on. At least pitch carefully to him. Wayne Garrett lives in Sarasota, Florida. His bro older brother Adrian is with the Cubs. His other brother Charlie formerly was an infielder in the Atlanta Braves organization. All three Garrett brothers signed originally by the Braves. And they're going to put him on. This will be the third time in a row Garrett's reached base. So the hunter will have to pitch to the pesky Meon. For a single to wind out. He's swung hunter twice tonight. Ball four coming up. It's a time where Dizzy Dean can get in the stands with Wabash Cannon ball, isn't it? Yeah. Hunter's <laughs> on first and second, two down. The Mets are ahead, two nothing. Neon. 155 singles this year. That's a new Mets club record. Davis held the old record in 67. Only 30 of his hits this year. There's an attempt to pick off at second with a count on. Green dashes over, but alertly sliding back as Don Hahn. And a, a famous World Series play between the Braves and the Indians. 1948. Foul ball down the right field, left field line. No balls and a strike. Where did he get that power from? The ball went in the second back. He hit that ball over Rudy's in the first game. Almost off the wall in Oakland. No balls, one strike to me on. Runners on first and second. Two down. Green. Lindsay, my memory serves me right. It was Tommy Holmes that was on second base for the Braves. First time they called for that pickoff play in second. And boy, how they argued about that one. Hahn at second. Garrett at first. Two out. Mets are on top, two to nothing. Last of the fourth inning. He hits it to Bando. He boots the ball. Everybody stay. Watch it again. Tell getting a rough hot play off the line once again from the yard, trying to protect that hole. He got the in between hop, did not keep the ball in front of him. Now the bases are loaded. For the scoring, Rusty Stab will be up with a base and loaded. And they have scored a base hit for Felix Neon. Neon gets a base hit. Actually, in that pickoff play in that corner, for a series, I think it was Phil Macy now. Base and loaded. Two down. Rusty Stab, a single to left, wide to left. But so Joe Rudy's playing him to hit the left field. Hits it to the box, and he comes and wriggles out of the jam. No runs for the Mets in the fourth. At the end of four, they're leading two nothing. Are you one of the millions of youngsters dreaming of wearing a big league uniform someday? You never know. Your dream may come true if you have the ability plus the determination and desire. You stand a good chance, and you don't have to stop there. Many players go on to become coaches, managers, club officials, and even league presidents. Baseball is a game that provides all kinds of opportunities on and off the field. Baseball is a great career. The preceding announcement was made on behalf of Major League Baseball. Kurt Gowdy, Lindsey Nelson, Tony Kubek moving into the fifth inning. The Mets leading the A's 2-0 and Dick Green the batter. Batting in the number eight spot for Oakland, 
Seaver curves him outside, ball one. Green bounced the third, his first trip. And he's still uh, looking for his first hit of this series. Go for five now. Foul ball. Levels the count at one and one. Catfish Hunter will be up next, and then Bert Campanaris. For those that joined us late, the scoring came in the first inning. Garrett led off with a homer for the Mets. Neon single, stop single in the third in the hit and run. Foul ball, and then Neon scored on a wild pitch, and that's been it. The A's have left four. The Mets have left seven. One ball, two strikes to Dick Green. Terrific Tom in. And a strikeout for him. Seven strikeouts for Seaver. That was a curveball. Dick Williams, there's Sal Bando and rocking it over with Green. We're talking about Seaver, Lindsay. What are we going to do with this fella? That would be the subject of conversation, all right. Jim Hunter flied out his first time. Fastball right by him for strike one. Strike two, nothing and two to Jim Hunter. And Mr. Tom Seaver, right now wearing him on his watch chain. He's the man in charge. The two strike delivery, he had Hunter reaching. Foul ball, 0 oh and 2. The score, the New York Mets two, the Oakland A's nothing. John Matlack will pitch tomorrow night for the Mets and Ken Holtzman will be going for the A's. They were the two opening game pitchers of the World Series. Two strikes. A ball, one and two. On deck, Bert Campanaris. Just a piece again. One ball, two strikes to Jim Hunter. 69 series. He lost the first game 4-1 to one at Baltimore. Then he came back to pitch a 2-1, 10-inning complete game victory in New York in game 4, 69. Ball, two strike two. The Mets lost that opening game to Baltimore, and the Miracle Boys won four in a row, making unbelievable catches. The 2-2 pitch. Back three. Eight strikeouts for Tom Seaver. The all-time World Series strikeout record in one game, 17, held by Bob Gibson of the St. Louis Cardinals. He joined us uh, late at one stage. Seaver had a shot at tying a World Series record of six strikeouts in a row. He struck out five in a row when he faced Green in the third. A Green bounced out. Captain Harris bluffs the bunt. Ball one to it. Captain Harris has one hit in two times. Seaver actually throws two kinds of fastballs, I think, Lindsay. He throws the one that he holds across the seams at time, the one that takes off, and then he'll hold one with the seams that he will sink. Move in on the right-handed hitters. Good pitch. One ball, one strike to Campanero. Now ball makes the count one and two. And Seaver staying ahead of those hitters. He not only has good control, he has good control in the strike zone. He can spot the ball, especially when he's ahead. He can go high and tight. He can go low and away, up, down. Two down, nobody on. One ball, two strikes to Campanaris. Foul again. You notice as uh, we showed you our handheld shot, now Garrett plays the right-handed batter in tight at third. You have to. One, two pitch. Two balls, two strikes. 
Caponaris does something. Joe Rudy is the next scheduled batter. Two two delivery. Strike three and Seaver is going to challenge Bob Gibson's record tonight maybe. He struck out the side in the fifth. At the end of four and a half it is New York two Oakland nothing. Right now it's party pleasure month here at your nearby Kentucky Fried Chicken store. So come on and have a party with my good hot Kentucky Fried Chicken and fixings. Get a bucket of chicken, make it good. Have a barrel of fun, make it a party. Get a Kentucky Fried Chicken party, everyone. America loves what the Colonel calls a good time, party time. Barrel of fun. To the equitable agent, no two people are alike. Is there anyone else in the whole human race with your kind of style and your kind of grace? No two people are alike. That's why your equitable agent thinks of you as an individual. His training and thinking are shaped around you and your life insurance needs. To the equitable agent, there's nobody else exactly like you. You know, one of the famous jacketed announcers in baseball here is Lindsey Nelson. I don't know how many jackets he has. They're all loud, but look look at Kubek tonight. He's not done you, Lindsey. We're I think classic. We had, huh? I think we are classic. <laughs> You're right. That's terrible. Well, when you've gone through four and a half, and Tom Seaver with nine strikeouts is the story of this game. And how to continue the play-by-play for -play NBC will be the New York Met announcer, Lindsey Nelson. All right, Kurt. <laughs> Ooh. Cleon Jones is at the plate now. Here's Hunter's pitch, and it's in for a call strike as the New York Mets are up here now in the bottom of the fifth inning. Leading by a score of 2-0. Cleon struck out and grounded out so far. Had a great finish during the regular season. Chase to breaking pitch 0-2. Dribbler, third base side. Hunter will play it in time. One away. Cleon Jones with a swinging roller to the third base side, and that brings up John Milner. He was on on an error by Hunter in the first inning, and he walked in the third. Milner grew up in the greater Atlanta area, and he uh, became a great admirer of Henry Aaron, as who wouldn't be? Picked up many of Henry Aaron's mannerisms. That's high for a ball. And for that reason, the ball players call him the hammer. Picks up that home run mannerism that won't be bad. <laughs> Not at all. An open. In for a call strike. It's one and one to Milton. One man out, nobody on. Mets got their two runs in the bottom of the first inning, and since then, this game has settled down, way down. A one one. Way back. Going, going. It's in play. It's in play. And he has held it first. He's got out there in such a hurry that he has held it first place. One and one pitch that's watching again. I don't know if Milner ran hard all the way down to first base or he just held up out of respect. The arm of Reggie Jackson, the ball was down a little bit away, a pitch that you don't usually pull with this kind of authority. Let's watch it again. So we can see the ball caroming off the foul pole, I believe. Jackson has already made one good throw to third base. Now Jerry Brody to the plate. Runner goes, hit and run, in the air to left. Rudy's there, that'll bring Milner back. That's going to the hit and run, and Milner retreats to first, two away. That'll bring up Don Hahn. Milner had to have one of the longest singles of the season. He certainly did, and he got out there in one big hurry, too. Don Hahn had a ground rule double in the fourth inning. He's one for two. Go over to first. He's back in time, and... The A's have the bullpen going again now. 
Double barrel action. Odom and Lindblad. Outside. 1 0 now to Don Hahn. There they are. The left hand is Lindblad. The right hand is Odom. Two men out, runner at first. That's your batting in the bottom of the fifth inning. Shea Stadium in New York. Game number three of the World Series. Popped up into left. Rudy is coming on now. He's there. He makes the catch and the side is up. There was a hit and there's one left. The end of five. The score is Mets two, A's nothing. Polaroid's new SX-70. Just touch the button. Now these pictures, developing themselves outside the camera, are hard and dry. Minutes later, you have finished photographs seemingly as real as life itself. The new SX-70 land camera from Polaroid. Hi, I'm Joe Garagio. There are over a million Dodge darts on the road today, and there must be a lot of reasons for this, and I'd like to find out some of them. Because it's right in between, it's not too compact, and it's not too big, it's just right. It's a little car, but it has a pretty big car performance, you know. There's so many on the road, we figured, boy, they've got to have something going. If you need any more reasons to go with Dodge Dart, ask the million who own one. We pause now for station identification. See Sanford and Son, followed by a special edition of Lots of Luck, Friday night. Coming up now at the top of the sixth inning, and Joe Rudy will lead it off against Tom Seaver. Rudy doubled in the first inning, grounded in the fourth play in the third inning. Seaver has struck out nine, and he has walked one. There's Seaver's record at home and on the road during this season. Five innings, the Mets two runs on six hits. The A's no runs, they have three hits. Way back in center, Don Hahn going toward the wall. He's in the track, he's at the wall, he leaps and Don Hahn has the ball. They're playing Woody really perfectly, shading him a little bit to right field. Hahn actually thought he was a little closer to the wall than he was in the warning track. He jumped, he still had some room to go back a couple more steps, but it's a fine catch. Let's look at it again from another angle as he punches the morning track. As soon as he hits it, he knows he's getting close. He knows he can take just a couple of more strides. Here he goes. Perfectly timed jump, Tony. Sal Bando's at the plate. Saber misses everything all the way back. It's ball one. The catch of Don Hahn has the crowd humming here at Shea Stadium. That's high. Don Hahn began this season at the Mets AAA Farm Club at Tidewater, Virginia. He was obtained by the Mets from Montreal a couple of years back in exchange for Ron Swoboda. 2-0 the count out of Bando. Foul back and out of play, it's two and one. Lindsay, there have been times tonight when Seaver has thrown small baseballs. That was one of them. Mm. Two and one the count. One man out, nobody on. Now 
are a little low. Three and one. Waiting on deck now, Reggie Jackson. Way back in center, well, Hahn got another trip. Can't get this one. It's in play, and Bando pulls up now. Reggie Jackson is coming up. He is the tying run at the plate. Watch Don again, he has turned the wrong way. He turned over his right shoulder. The wind is blowing out to right field, just the shade, moving it away from him toward right field. He displays a pretty good throwing arm here. Not that very accurate, but he threw it a long way from center. Reggie Jackson has been up twice, struck out both times. That's him for a call strike. Start him off with a breaking pitch, Bando. Pedro Garcia for the American League lead in doubles, 32 this season. Garcia with a shot for rookie of the year. Curveball in there for a call strike two to Reggie Jackson. <laughs> Wonder who she's for. The A's wives. be an 0-2 pitch time call by Jackson. As soon as uh, these A's hitters look like they might start timing Seaver's fastball, he's gone with two quick breaking balls to Jackson. Fastball nice struck him out. Ten strikeouts for Tom Seaver. The third time tonight he has struck out Reggie Jackson. That will bring up Gene Tennis. You've seen those signs before, Lindsay. Kurt and I haven't seen them very often. That's a clever man. That fellow has a, a, a big supply of them. <laughs> Keeps them in a case and pulls them out for every occasion. In there for a call strike. run in scoring position now. Double and a run batted in. It's the Mets two and the A's one. Let's watch down that left field foul line. That's Marty Springstead of the American League. They've got the red jackets on. He gets out of the way of that line drive hooking in the left field corner by Gene Tennis for a double. So now the tying run is at second. Two men are out, and Big Davalio is coming up. He has struck out and had a base hit so far. He dribbled one to the third base side. Three of the four batters have really hit the ball high off Seaver this inning. Breaking pitch hit one hop to second. Mian has it. Goes to first in time to retire the side. So there was. A run on two hits, no errors, and one left. In the middle of the fifth, it is the Mets two and Oakland one. Want thousands of surefire lights? <laughs> Get Cricket. The disposable butane lighter by Gillette. It's reliable, and it lasts for months. Cricket. Gillette makes it work. Okay, thank you. Joe? I have had it with my old razor. Give me the best razor you've got. Hey, Joe, give him a track two, two-bladed razor. Why the track two? Hey, I use it, and it gives me a fantastically close shave. And it's so safe that sometimes I even have to check to make sure the blades are in the cartridge. <laughs> hey, look, I've tried a lot of razors, and believe me, the track two is just incredible. How could it be so close and safe at the same time? Simple. As the first blade shaves the whisker, it lifts it out, so the second blade can shave it again, closer. And both blades are... Re the Gillette Track 2 shaving system. It's the closest thing to a perfect shave. I'm so. Give me a Track 2. Here you go. Oh, thanks. Uh, no, I say thanks. Next Sunday, we're going to have a sports doubleheader on NBC. We'll have National Football League action. 
Either Baltimore, Detroit, Buffalo, and Miami, Houston and Cleveland, New York Jets and Pittsburgh, followed by a World Series Game 7. If the World Series is completed, then an NFL football doubleheader. Our second game across America will be Kansas City at Cincinnati. Back to Lindsey Nelson. All right, Kurt, Bud Harrelson's up, and the pitch is low and inside. It's 1-0. Oh. Now Mets 2, the A is 1. Now Mets are batting in the bottom of the sixth inning. Took the pitch in there for a call strike. It's one and one. A look in jam here. For game number three of the World Series. That shot from the handheld camera that's traveled all around this ballpark tonight. Upstairs and down. There's a base hit. Threw into center field. Picked up by Vic Davalio and played back. So Harrelson has a leadoff single. That brings Seaver up in a sacrifice circumstance. Bucks the follow through of Jim Catfish Hunter. He follows through that right foot over the left, turns his back to that hitter at times. This particular time he could not recover quickly enough, and the ball goes through. The A's, of course, expect Steven to be sacrificing here. He has fouled out and struck out two previous times at that. And Lindsay, the A's now have changed the fingers and knolls in the bullpen. They're ace relievers. Bando charged on the pitch. Did he ever? There he is. Run it off foul for strike one. Steve is looking down to Eddie Yost to see if the sacrifice is still on. There's the bullpen. Fingers the right-hander, nose number 32, the left-hander. Nobody out. Runner at first base. He's around and takes it in for a call strike. It's 0-2. Bud Harrelson, the runner at first. Seaver has looked to see if he's bunting all the way, and you'd rather expect he would be. It's around. Bunts it foul. He's a strikeout victim. That is the fourth strikeout for Hunter, the third strike, bunted foul. So with one away, now Wayne Garrett comes up. There you see the moon over Shea Stadium, or half a moon over Shea Stadium in any case. That's not the way I heard the title of that song. <laughs> Garrett has been on base three consecutive times, had a home run, walked, and an intentional walk. Foul ball, it's out of play. The A's were supposed to have the edge in power and hitting. But the Mets have out-hit the A's in each game. Proves in a short series, it's awfully difficult to establish form, really. Strike one to count to Garrett. Harrelson bluffed to start on the pitch, 0-2. Jim Catfish Hunter, after a shaky start, has settled down. This is an 0-2 pitch. High, 1-2. Hunter appears to be throwing a little bit harder now. He's loosened up pretty good. He struck out four, walked three, one of them intentionally. Foul it back. Holds one and two to Wayne Garrett. He's the leadoff man in the New York Mets batting order. He was drafted by the New York Mets from the Atlanta Braves organization before the 1969 season on the explicit recommendation of Bob Shepard, who at that time was a scout and is now the general manager. That's high. 2-2. Two -two. Felix Millan is on deck. Harrelson at first base with one man out. The Mets two, Oakland one. Here's the two-two. In there for a call, strike three. Strikeout number five for Catfish Hunter. 
two Mets are out. That will bring up Felix Mian. He's had two hits, two for three. Chokes that bat up almost to the trademark. The only other man in the National League I know who chokes about as much is Ron Hunt, the Montreal Expos. More than once this year, tight pitches have come in and hit the little end of the bat. <laughs> Foul ball. Yogi may now try to get Buddy Harrelson with two outs in scoring position. Avalio has got a long way to run, but he gets there and he makes the catch. So the side is retired. There was a hit. There was one left, and at the end of six, the score is the Mets two and Oakland one. You've probably seen demonstrations like this before, showing the effectiveness of polarized sunglasses in screening out glare. One brand has made a pretty big point of this. You might even think they're the only ones that fight glare. The sunglasses you're looking through are polarized Foster Grants, and they fight glare as well as any you can buy. Let's go back and look at the same demonstration again, this time with polarized Foster Grants and the other leading brand. Judge for yourself. The simple fact is, are unsurpassed when it comes to protection against reflected glare. Isn't it nice to know you don't have to pass up Foster Grant styling to get genuine polarized protection. Polarized Foster Grants. The looks, the lens. We've got it all. And now a program note. Tom Snyder welcomes Ted Patrick a psychological deep programmer who's hired by parents to rescue their children from Jesus movements on tonight's edition of Tomorrow, following The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson, right here on NBC. The seventh inning coming up at Shea Stadium, and the A's are going to make a move. They're going to make one right here, Pat Bork. Pat Bork is coming up to bat for Ray Fossey. He was obtained from the Chicago Cubs. So Dick Williams wants to go to his bench right now. That's in for a call strike. for a ball it's one and one Seaver goes they faced each other in National League play low and away it's two and one Lindsay Dick Williams has got people moving in that dugout all over the place with bats and helmets on the Lou's already come on deck I see Darren Johnson propped on the top step there's Johnson next to Williams Two and one, they count out of work, leading off and the top of the seventh. Fastball in tight, three and one. Lindsay, has this been a familiar pattern, what we're seeing tonight with Tom Seaver late in the season after 290 innings? It has been, especially on nights when Seaver had the strikeout pitch going. Many occasions he has tended to weaken in the later innings and give up the long ball. Here's a pitch in for a call strike. It's three and two. Payoff pitch. Foul out of play. Count remains three and two. Darrell Knowles is still warming up out in the Oakland bullpen. We're getting down to the bottom of the order. Ray Sadecki in the Mets bullpen. Right. Left-hander Ray Sadecki. Payoff pitch way back, but. Staub retreats and lands it up. In the track, he makes the catch. Now, Jesus Salou. Throw bat for Dick Green. In this series, he is three for nine. He was two for six in the playoffs. 36 games during the regular season with the A's, he batted 306. Jesus Salou. Looks like we'll see the last of Hunter now because Daryl Johnson has come out on deck. 
and Mets will be glad to see him out of there. Hunter really settled down after a rough first inning. The Mets have Harry Parker up throwing now, along with Ray Sadaki. Foul out of play at strike one. One man out, nobody on. The right-hander now is Parker, having joined Sadaki. Johnson apparently to bat for Hunter curveball hammered on the ground is short long throw for Harrelson in time do it now Johnson comes up to bat for Hunter so Jim Hunter goes out having pitched six innings he gave up two runs on seven hits struck out five walked three one of them intensely Watch Buddy Harrelson once again. A breaking ball. He is leaning to his right. He's already taken a half a step before Lou hit the ball. It's called leaning, going with the pitch. Harrelson makes it look easy with that long, smooth throw. Wonder if he ever makes a bad play. <laughs> Fastball outside. Darren Johnson, of course, went from the Philadelphia Phillies in the National League to the A's. Hit 246 for them during the season. That's low. Seaver goes behind 2-0 to Darren Johnson. Johnson is 1-for-1 one one in the World Series. He is 1-for-10, uh, was 1-for-10 in the playoffs. Look where Wayne Garrett's playing Johnson, Lindsay, right on that line at third. Fired in, it's 2-1. and one. Well, they have great respect for his ability to hit the long ball. He's proven that. That's Garrett. Playing a deep third base and close to the line. A swinging strike two, it's 2-2. Two -two. Two men out, nobody on base. The Mets two and the A's one. Severs 2-2. Two -two. In there for a call, strike three. Strikeout number 11 for Tom Severs. So the side's out in order, nothing across, and it's the Mets two and Oakland one. You know, I see them. The sciatica. The Unirals, they really stopped short. I feel it. I really feel it. Then say it. These dinner oils really turn sharp. We feel it too, don't we, Al? That's right. You can actually feel the difference between Uniroyal steel belted radials and your old bias ply tires. We feel it in our thrill show. You'll feel it on the road. I feel it. I really feel it. I know you do, my son. Continental Insurance introduces a new way to cover you, your home, and your car. The Continental Personal Comprehensive Protection Plan. Now, all the things covered in your homeowner's policy and all the things covered in your automobile policy can be covered in one policy. To cover all this, plus hospital, disability income, and mortgage life insurance in one plan, see your Continental Insurance agent. second base. Darryl, or rather Pat Burke is in at first base. The catcher is Gene Tennis, who moves from first behind the plate. And Darryl Knowles is the pitcher. So those changes have been made by the Oakland A's as Knowles will be facing the Mets coming up in the bottom of the seventh inning. It was Knowles who made a big play and Aaron throw to home plate when he tripped and fell down, fielding the ball directly at him in the second game with the bases loaded. That set up a couple of runs for the Mets. Knowles was in 52 games during the regular season. Had five starts, one six lost eight. Had nine saves and an ERA of 3.09. Games of the World Series. Shea Stadium banner makers have been busy. Rusty Staubel lead it off. One for three, had a base hit in the first inning. Off at strike one. 
Rusty Staub, a native of New Orleans, came to the major leagues with the Houston Astros and then went to Montreal before coming to New York. You have to give Jim Hunter a lot of credit for refusing to give in after that bad start. He shut the Mets out after the first inning. After having been with two expansion teams in his career, there was no way Rusty Stop would divide his shoulder in three. Foul back, one and two. He had injuries to both hands during the course of the season and had to change his whole philosophy of hitting. He had to start slapping the ball, going with the pitch, gave up pulling altogether at one stretch. Until the championship series. Till the championship series, and he suddenly got it back. Getting to that part of the ball game, too, in this close game, where Yogi's going to have to start thinking of some defensive measures for Staub with that throwing arm. Foul it off, count holds one and two. Rusty really hurting. Let's watch his swing once again. Appears to be having trouble with the inside pitches. That was the way of breaking ball. A little low, it's 2 2. Among his many other talents, Rusty Staub is a gourmet cook. I'd have a little trouble handling the ladle with that shoulder injury, but uh, it's his hobby. Inside, it's full at 3 and 2. Staub is leading off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Mets are leading in the game by a score of two to one, and the Met crowd's trying to get something started on behalf of the hometown heroes. Darrell Knowles looks as though uh, he wonders where it's all coming from. back makes the catch so there's one away and that will bring up Cleon Jones Jones struck out grounded out grounded out 0 for 3 so far tonight coming up now against the left hander Noel's been used for the season against left-handed hitters he has difficulties with the right handers comes from the side at times with the sidearm curveball and sinker Ground ball is short. Campanaris up with it. How about a Pat Burke? Two away. John Milner will be the batter. And on base three times. On an error by Hunter in the first inning. And after that walk and singled off the wall and right. Two men out. Nobody on. Outside for a ball. It's one and zero. Lindsay, the Mets are a better uh, ball club uh, offensively against right-handed pitching, aren't they? Are indeed, because they don't have enough depth really to do much platooning, and those left-hand batters, Garrett, Milner, will be in there in any case. Pitch missed, and it's two and zero. Jerry Grody on deck. He missed two months with a broken arm this year. Swing and a miss. Two and one now to Milner. Darrell Knowles was on the pitching staff of the Senators when Gil Hodges was the manager there. And uh, a number of the Met coaches, present Met coaches, were on that staff. Inside, off the glove, and all the way back. It's three and one. This will be a three one delivery. It's in there, and the count is full at three and two. Dick Williams.
That Over. jacket feels comfortable down there. You bet. Here is the payoff pitch. Walking. So Milner is on base for the fourth consecutive time. And Jerry Grody is coming up. Grody was struck on the arm by a pitch thrown by Raymond Hernandez in the month of May in Pittsburgh and had a broken arm. I guess it says looking at the bright side when he said he felt that his strong finish was because of the fact that in other years he was pretty well out of gas by the time they got to August and September. This year he had had two months rest. Now you look at Milner. That handheld man's got a great pair of legs, hasn't he? He's been all over the stadium. I'm trying to figure where he was there. That pitch is low. The only place, the place I could figure was he was on top of the scoreboard. I don't know where he is, but that shot gives me a nosebleed. <laughs> he must either have a good heart or an uh, able elevator here. 1 0 with a count to Grady. Foul ball back out of it. That's a shot you don't see too much on ordinary game coverage. No. <laughs> <laughs> one and one to Grady. Two men out. No, certainly takes a lot of time. It seems like he rubs the ball down every time he gets it back. There he is. Sitting up in the corner. One and one to count. Ground ball to short. Campaneras goes across for the force at second to Kubiak, and the side is retired. So there was a walk and one left, and at the end of seven, it is Mets two, Oakland one. Dodge did an ingenious thing to the pickup truck. They added 34 cubic feet of space right behind the seat, thereby creating the first club cab pickup. In 1974, Dodge did another smart thing. They made this club cab available with four-wheel drive. So that now, besides all that extra room back here, you get extra traction down there. The greatest cooking discovery since fire, the Amana Radar Range Microwave Oven, is now better than ever because of the exclusive Radar Range Browning Skillet. Sear flavor and natural meat juices into steaks. Brown chops to perfection. Fry eggs for breakfast or grill a Reuben sandwich. Most foods cook in about one-fourth the time insist on an Amana radar range. The browning skillet is optional. Remember, if it doesn't say Amana, it's not a radar range. We pause now for station identification. A new nurse brings efficiency and headaches to Dr. Jameson on the Brian Keith Show Friday night. Campaneras leads off in the eighth inning for the A's. It's a ground ball deep and through for a base hit. Campaneras turns and holds. The tying run is on at first with nobody out. The A's batting in the eighth inning. There's one of the advantages Lindsay and Kurt of having speed and being able to bunt. We get that third baseman drawn in and Garrett couldn't get to the ball. So now Joe Rudy is at the plate. Double, grounded into a forced play, and then sent Don on to the wall for a spectacular circus catch in the sixth inning. And McGraw and Parker in the Met bullpen. Rudy's good hitting behind the runner, Lindsay. He can go to right field. Seaver with a toss over to first. Rookie is followed by Sal Bando in the back court. Oh, 
1 and 0. Caminera is left to start on the pitch. Rudy looking down to get his sign now. Merv Noren, the coach at third. Garrett shallow at third and right on the line. A lot of room between Harrelson and Garrett. Now he's moving back. Fast ball in there for a call strike. It's one and one. There you see Garrett's position just about even with the bag there now. And that's two, Oakland one. The A's are batting in the top of the eighth inning. Shea Stadium in New York. Go to first. Cabaneras is back. Runner goes. Go to second, and he is safe. A stolen base. A stolen base for Campaneris. Look at it again. Brody really coming out of there with a good throw to Felix Mian. A close call for Russ Getz, the second base umpire. From that angle, he appeared to be out. Let's look at another angle. Take a close look as Brody really got rid of the ball with a perfect throw. How do you tell with that cloud of dust? Here's another angle from center field. Harry Coyle's got a lot of angles in this shot. I believe as the tag was coming down, he did have that foot in on the bag. That's the angle that really yep. showed it, the center field angle. The count is two and one to Rudy at the plate. There's nobody out. There's a base hit to right field and coming around with the tying run is Campanera. Rusty Staub can't throw. He underhands the ball into Mian. And so it's tied at 2-2. Joe you know, Rudy has swung the best bat in this series for the A's. When he hasn't had a hit, he's been ripping. Watch Rusty again going after the hit. The ball scooted underneath the glove of John Miller at first base. I thought he had a shot at it. Now watch Rusty, unable to throw with that right shoulder injury. So there's still nobody out. The score is tied 2-2, and Sal Bando's at the plate. Side. As the A's are trying to move the go-ahead run into scoring position at second base. Bando looks down to see if it's still on. He's around. Punch it strongly. Taken by Milner and played to me on. That might have been very close had John Miller whirled and tried to head off that lead runner to Buddy Harrelson. Here comes Yogi. Let's watch it again. Panda with a strike on him, squaring away, sacrificing in the direction of Miller. Remember, Miller cannot charge as hard as the third baseman as he had to hold Rudy on close. Proper place to play. Look at Rudy in your screen. Miller didn't even take a look. Apparently somebody yelled him off the play or he made his own judgment. Yogi Berra talking to Seaver and Grody. Got McGraw and Parker in the bullpen. Bud Harrelson has come there to the mound. That the right hand is Parker, the left hand is McGraw. Seaver will stay in the ball game. And pitch to Reggie Jackson. Jackson has been up three times and struck out three times. Interesting to see whether or not Yogi puts him on with first base open and tennis the right hander and try and take a chance for the double play. Many times you let an experienced pitcher like Seaver, who can nibble at the corners, let him do his own thing. Center field, Don Hahn moves up. Extra catch, no advance, two away. Now Gene Tennis will be the batter. Struck out, walk, and double to drive in a run. The Mets have two runs on seven hits. Oakland has two runs on seven hits.
breaking pitches in for a call strike. Rudy, the runner at second with two away. Outside, one and one. I know what Rusty Stobbs thinking right now in right field. Hit it the opposite way. My shoulder is so bad. Curveball swung on and missed. It's one and two. Seaver has struck out 11 and walked one. As there is a run, there are two hits, no errors, and one left in the middle of the eighth. Two, two, tie. We just bought a fantastic color portable. One button tuning, solid state, and it adjusts its own picture to changing room light automatically. It's a ma patio light, bedroom light, kitchen light. Magnavox always gives me the right picture because it adjusts to the slightest light change. I don't touch a thing. Magnavox Videomatic Color TV. What a difference watching a Magnavox. Washington, D.C., and some advice from people who travel for a living. The American Express card seems to be the only one I can use everywhere I go. I don't have any other credit cards. I just use the American Express card. And I've traveled from Maine to Hawaii in it, and it's never been turned down yet. I don't have a lot of other credit cards. The American Express card is all that I need. When I'm on the road, I live on my American Express card because it's so universally accepted. Call 800 ae 5000 to apply for an American Express card. Now, a program note from NBC. The career of Henry Aaron is the subject of a one-hour NBC News special program, The Long Winner of Henry Aaron. Sunday at 10 Eastern Time, right here at NBC. I think it's going to be a very short winner. He's going to be so busy traveling, making appearances, television commercials, and then spring training. But watch the Henry Aaron special Sunday at 10 o'clock right here on NBC. And now the Mets come up in the bottom of the eighth inning, and Don Hahn will lead it off facing Darrell Knoll. Pitch is low and away for a ball. The NBC president, Julian Goodman, on the right in the front row, and Don Durgan with him. Shortstop, Campaneras, the throw to first in time. Hahn has grounded out short to first. An old shortstop, Tony Kubek, should appreciate the shortstop play we've seen in this series from Bud Harrelson and Burt Campaneris. Certainly have. Campy played a fine shortstop last year. Now we call that 69 series when Buddy Harrelson caught everything in sight and more. He did that as a switch hitter now. He turns around to bat right-handed against Knowles. He's gone one for three tonight. What an improvement up the middle that was when they acquired Felix Mian from Atlanta and of course when Harrelson got healthy later on in the season. I wonder if Tommy Seaver did not tell Buddy Harrelson to take his time as Sadecki has just started throwing down in the bullpen for these Mets. Seaver may have gone back into Yogi saying he's tired. There's Sadecki. Might very well have. One away. That's in for a call strike. Oh and one. We're on a 2-2 tie in the bottom of the eighth inning. Shea Stadium in New York. A high pop to left down the line. Campaneros is out, and Rudy is coming strong, and Rudy makes the catch in fair territory. Lindsey Joe Rudy's now had six putouts tonight in left field. Look at that last play again in that left field corner. Campaneros going hard all the way until he hears his left fielder Rudy wave him off. Now Joe comes in to make the catch. I believe we're going to have the pinch hitter, Lynn. Jim Beecham is being sent out to bat for Seaver. Jim Beecham, right-hand batter, being sent out to bat for Seaver. Knowles gets him out. Hunter and Seaver, neither one will be able to win this game. 
But this was as advertised, these two going against each other tonight. Jim Hunter against Tom Seaver. Seaver has gone eight innings, given up two runs on seven hits, struck out 12 and walked one. You see Sadecki in the bullpen. And that's where our handheld cameraman is right now. Man must have legs of steel. <laughs> he must have. <laughs> Beecham in this series has gone 0 for 2. Hit 279 during the regular season. No homers, 14 runs batted in. He and Mike Andrews have become the central figures. <laughs> yes. first joined the Mets I asked him about that pronunciation B-E-A-U-C-H-A-M-P he said I'm a French Oki he's from <laughs> Oklahoma there's a pitch low one and one they count one and two Jim Beecham with the ball back to Daryl Knowles. That second game with the bases loaded. Outside high, it's 2-2 now to Beecham. Two men out, nobody on. Sal Bando at third base. Playing a deep third, guarding the line as precaution against a possible extra base hit. Way back at left, but Rudy's there, and he's waiting, and Joe Rudy makes the catch. The side is out, nothing across. And so at the end of eight, the score is tied. The Mets two, and Oakland two. There are three stages in the life of an oil field. It has a beginning, a middle and an end. A field that's been fully developed will usually produce at its peak for a relatively few years and then decline by as much as 10% a year. And we're sorry to have to tell you that most oil fields in the U.S. today are past their prime. It takes nature millions of years to create an oil field. It takes man only 20 or 30 years to use it up. That's one of the reasons why there's a worldwide shortage of crude oil today. What's Mobile doing about it? Our crews are working 24 hours a day all over the world to bring you more oil. Well, autumn is certainly one of the nicest times of the year around Cooperstown, New York. A marvelous place to visit. And Cooperstown, New York, is the home of baseball's Hall of Fame. And this year they have a new exhibit room devoted to baseball today. Plan to visit Cooperstown, New York, at baseball's Hall of Fame. It's open every day except Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Preceding announcement made on behalf of Major League Baseball. Ray Sadecki's the new pitcher. The game is tied 2-2 two to two going to the ninth inning. He joined us late in the first inning. Wayne Garrett led off against Jim Hunter with a home run. Then Meon single. He went to third on Rusty Stop, hit and run single. Meon scored in a wild pitch. The Mets have been shut out since. Days out since. Days scrapped back. After one out in the sixth off Tom Seaver, Bando doubled the deep center, and Gene Tennis doubled the left to drive him home. In the eighth, Campanaris led off with a single, stole second his third stolen base of the series, and then scored on Joe Rudy's single down the right field line. Sadecki, one of the players out of the bullpen for this Mets team, who was not publicized very highly, highly, but he helped out quite a bit in the bullpen this year. He's not overpowering, moves the ball around. Once in a while, he'll let loose with a fastball. Sadecki pitched one and two-thirds scoreless innings in the Sunday game of this World Series. In the 1964 World Series with the St. Louis Cardinals, he had a World Series win. 
Big Navalio will lead it off now for the Oakland A's as they bat in the top of the ninth. Score tied 2-2. Number 37. Navalio is one for three. Struck out. Had a base hit on the swinging roller and grounded out. Bluff says though to bunt, takes the pitch low. It's 1-0. Garrett playing way up at third base. Davalio has speed, gets a good jump out of the box. He chops at the ball a lot, hits in that direction at times. 1-0 pitch. Off the glove, off the yard, and on out into right field. Mian was playing quite shallow for Davalio in the event that he might lay a bunt down and try and beat it out, and the ball just got by him in a hurry. That will bring up Burke now. That Burke. He's around, watches low and away. It's one and oh. Charles against Mian on Davalio's ball. That's a bunted foul back to first out of play. That surprised me. It was a tough chance. It very sharply. It was. Mm. Took the official scorer some time to come up with that decision. There are three scores, and they probably conferred. That was hit like a rocket. That's low. Two and one now. The official scorers are Joe Heiling of the Houston Post, Dick O'Connor of the Palo Alto Times, and Edgar Munzel of the Chicago Sun Times, who will be retiring after 45 years for a third. Now, who's going to come up first? Nobody. And work is on. Davalio moves to second. And of all the players on the A squad to drag a perfect bunt, Pat Burke does it. Look at it again. Milner charging, Garrett at the corners. Burke slaps it very hard. Now Sadecki gives up as the ball gets by Milner. He gave up. He should have been the man to get over there and try and make the play first. So now Lewis will come into the ball game to pinch run for Burke. He can fly. Alan Lewis is the runner. Alan Lewis running for Burke. That's he. Runners at first and second, nobody out. And we will probably see Kubiak up there to bunt two. Brody getting signal straight with Sadecki as pitcher as to where he should throw the ball. And out comes Yogi. He's got his bullpen going again with McGraw up and throwing down there, and so is Harry Parker. Yogi Berra. Game number four from right here at Shea Stadium as you watch the New York Mets bullpen. Game time the same tomorrow night. Lindsay, we've had a new World Series record set tonight. Joe Rudy with seven putouts in left field has broken a World Series record of six held by George Lewis. Usual of the Yankees, McCormick of the Braves, Harvey Keene of the Giants, Tommy Fresh of the Yankees, and uh, Tommy Davis of the Dodgers. Seven put out for Joe Rudy for one game. We're going to have Tug McGraw coming in here now. Tug's going to get the ride in the electric cart as he comes in in relief of Ray Sadecki. There's a break in the action here in New York to score the Mets two and Oakland two. throws his Sunday punch. You can bet corrosion is out to get your car's cooling system, too. The answer, Prestone 2, winter summer protection. Only Prestone 2 has a patented silicone silicate formula. The Prestone inhibitor system shields and preserves metal against rust and corrosion. Protect against freeze-up, boil over, and corrosion with Prestone 2. If you can't trust Prestone, who can you trust? 
Action. Good rich, good year. You get confused. Maybe even go to good year for good year radio. Uh, good rich radio. One ninety-seven. Good rich, good good. Two twenty-one. Good rich, good year. You get confused. Maybe even go to good year zone. Good rich. Uh, Two twenty-five. Action. Good rich, good year. You get confused. Maybe even go to good year for good rich radios. Print it. Have you guys ever think of changing your name? Have to remember, good rich. Doug McGraw into the pitching now for the New York Mets, doing a little groundskeeping first. Pitched in both the previous games of this World Series, a total of eight innings. Charged with four runs on six hits, struck out nine and walked four. Doug McGraw, one one, lost none. McGraw coming in in a tough situation as he usually did, especially late in the season. A bunt situation with Kubiak up at the plate, Manguel waiting on deck. He might pinch it. So let's see if. The Mets can execute in the butt situation, one of the toughest plays in baseball, and so far, the series has not been a game where both teams have been some fundamentally sound. There have been quite a few mistakes. Cleon sick out in left field now, as he comes over to left center field to talk with Don Hahn. It looks like Don Hahn's getting sick looking at Cleon Jones. That's exactly what it looks like. Mm. Is that an Irish chick they're playing? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> How come our creepy camera hasn't gotten a replay on Cleon Jones throwing up in left field? He may have it. You can't tell. Manguel's come out on deck to uh, pinch it for Knowles. It's Kubiak at the plate. He's around. Munson fouls it off. It's strike one. Navalillo is at second. Lewis at first. Nobody out. Score tied 2 2. The Oakland A's batting in the top of the ninth inning. McGraw, good fielder, Lindsay. Yes. Low. You might have seen how McGraw broke over to third base, the place that Kubiak will probably try and bunt the ball. He's trying to protect that line so that Garrett stay on third base and they can force that runner. One one pitch. Fouled off. One and two. Runners at second and at first. Two delivery. He's around. Pitch is high, and it's two-two. Kubiak getting his information now to see if he's bunting all the way. Apparently was on that pitch. He's around. McGraw has it. There's the fourth. No other play. Might have had a play at first. Oh, really came off that mound. Let's look at it again as I think Kubiak maybe tried to force the ball by McGraw as he broke toward that third base foul line. Garrett, as you said, Lindsay, he might have had a play except he did not have good possession of the ball. The ball got stuck in his webbing. Let's watch Tug again. He really broke off the mound, but not a very good bunt. Two strikes, he was just trying to hit the ball somewhere in fair territory. So now there's one out, runners first and second. Angel Manguel is coming up now to bat for Darrell Knowles. 0 for 2 in the series, 1 for 9 in the playoffs. During the season, hit 224, three homers, 13 runs batted in. Angel Manguel. Score tied 2 2. The A's batting in the top of the ninth inning. Lewis, the runner at second now. 
Kubiak's the runner at first. He really took a ruffle, swinging strike. Lewis at second base, a dangerous base stealing threat. He's led several leagues in the minors, really keeping him close. There he is. Foul it back, it's two strikes. With Knowles out of the ball game, Paul Lindlad is throwing in the bullpen for the Oakland A's. Tug has gotten some pitches up. In fact, that last screwball that Manguel jumped down was almost in his eyes. Runners at first and second, an 0-2 pitch. Steps off. I would guess that Tug's got to be tired. It's like asking the starting pitcher after pitching a complete game to come back with a day and a half rest. Standing ovation when it goes into that Met dugout. Camp. Watch it again. Looked like a perfect pitch to Manguel. He's thrown him one screwball down just about the outside corner. You can see the reaction of McGraw wanting to pitch and the reaction of Manguel in disgust. Cavanaro is coming up. He's had two hits. Yogi Berra. Dick Williams. Ground ball foul. Off the line at third glove by Garrett. Strike one. McGraw in game two. He caromed the ball off Campanaire's helmet. Two strikes on him. Walker, the pitching coach, moving over with Yogi. Cross stepped off. He wants the signs against Brody. Cabanera steps out of the plate. Two balls, two strikes, two men out, score tied, 2-2. Two, two. Two, two delivery. Inside. It'll be an automatic start for the runners now. Lewis at second, Kubiak at first. McGraw thought he had that one. Runners will be moving on the pitch. In the air to center. Don Hahn is there. Listen to the ovation now for Tug McGraw. No run. A hit. Error and two men left. And in the middle of the ninth inning, the score is tied. Oakland two and the Mets two.
Now program notes, Sanford and Son each decide to check out the same neighborhood bar. And what they find there starts father worrying about son and son about father. Sanford and Son, Friday at 8 o'clock, 7 Central Time, right here on NBC. Angel Manuel has gone to center field. And Vic Davileo has moved into first base in center field. So Davileo is at first. Manuel in center, and Paul Lindblad is the new pitcher. Now the Mets coming up with a chance to win it. Tied 2-2, two to two, last of the ninth inning, and they have the top of the order up. Wayne Garrett, who led off the ball game with a home run, will lead it off. Lindblad, 1-5 during the regular season, had two saves, pitched to three batters Sunday. Two got out on arrows by Andrews, and one was retired. In the air to left, and... That's Campaneras out in short left to make the catch. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. At Shea Stadium in New York, this is Lindsey Nelson with Kurt Gowdy and Tony Kubek. As the New York Mets come up with one man out, nobody on, it's Felix Neon at the plate. He's two for four tonight. That's a strike. Errol Knowles pitched two innings, allowed no runs, no hits, struck out none, walk one. Fastball outside. catcher they've only got one catcher listed on their regular roster and that is possible ground ball is short Campaneros gets the hop guns it two away it back at strike one Two men up. Bottom of the ninth. Nine tight. Bolly Fingers is throwing in the bullpen now for the Oakland A's. Fingers is up and throwing. Even McGraw may not be able to shave when this series is over. <laughs> Here's the one one. It's high. Two one pitch. Three and one. If I've ever stopped one of the pull of pitches, this one right here, three and one. That's a call strike. It's payoff pitch. Popped it up to the right side. Tennis is coming to the dugout. This is out of play. Out left center field. Left center field. All the way, it's a ground through double. An intentional walk, and they'll pitch to the left-hand batter, John Felder, because this run would not mean a thing. It's the run at second base they're concerned with. The Mets have two runs, eight hits. The A's have two runs, eight hits. Each team has been charged with an error. Rube Walker and Yogi Berra. Go into extra innings. Base three men got him out in the ninth. 